Hello and welcome to the Jewel Arrow Breaking Test Mission. I conducted this test as part of my Twitch live stream on May the 10th to see what the proper altitude for arrow breaking around Jewel would be in the new KSP 1.0.2 aerodynamics. Turns out that the answer was quite surprising compared to what it used to be in the older versions of KSP. I chose to do this test in sandbox mode because my career mode save didn't allow for quick saving and quick loading. Another goal of the stream was to test out one of my old reusable launchers from 0.25 and 0.90, the Taurus B. So with that, let's turn to my live commentary from May the 10th. Okay, so I'm thinking about doing a dual re-entry testing flight first, and part of that is to test out my Taurus launcher, which I built in 0.25 initially. So that is what I'm going to try out first. 5x5? Five five? Good. So, in point two five, I made the huge Taurus launcher, which I subsequently used or attempted to use in my Hard Time series, and I want I've imported that in here. So I need to make a little jewel probe of some sort. Um, I guess we should uh, go with the works and see if it blows up in Jewel's atmosphere, right? So um, let's say Science Junior. Buffering a lot. Uh, it tends to start out like that. Hold on, let me. Oh, wait, there's no drop frames here. Hmm. So I'm not getting any drop frames on my end. And uh, my system should be cool. I, I finished the video for today relatively early on, so. Hi, Arrow. Working just fine for Jordish? Okay. So, like I said, uh, dual re entry testing. And so, how heavy a probe do we want it? I guess is the question. I'm gonna l let's at least put all the science on. Do the thing. Let's say we have a substantial probe that we gotta send around the moons of Jewel, right? Typical sort of thing. And we'll probably want. Let's just throw a sc survey scanner on it. Uh, not not that many. Just uh, just one. What's that top middle in the science? Is that new? Science, top middle. Yeah, atmospheric, uh, this is, uh, what you call it? Well, it's part of the new resource system, I suppose. I haven't used it yet, so I don't know. But uh, it's uh, for detecting stuff in the atmosphere. Might be tied to some science that could be done. It says run atmospheric analysis, yeah. Anyway, uh, well, I guess, well, sure, let's slap one on and see what it does. Um, how heavy? Not heavy. We'll analyze the atmosphere of Jewel. There we go. Oh, not two, just one. Oh, I've got two of everything now. Crud. Okay. Just trying to do this quickly. And then we got... The main thing is to test the launcher that I had from my previous series to see if that works. Um, where are the... Ah, yes, heat shield. So we'll have a nice, big, thick heat shield. Right? Uh, there's the fuel tank. We are gonna have little thrusters. Uh, oh, they're called Twitch now, is it? That's, that's nice. And they have 16... Let's, let's just have two, I suppose. And tilt them out a little bit. so that they pass the heat shield of course okay so that's a little probe so it's, only, it's uh, 5.5 .5 tons part is just a uh, replacement for the older thing oh that's just a uh, replacement for the sensor array computing nose cone okay alright good to know don't know if we need it anymore then but we'll see okay so now the the carrying well, let's just go with something big so that I don't have to worry about Delta V. Now, this is not an actual mission. We're not really trying to do anything except for testing re-entry at Joule. So, the important thing is to be able to keep attitude, which is why the advanced inline stabilizer is there. Our probe core has all the normal SAS units. And we'll have power, though. We might want to slap on some uh, solar panels that are always open. Where are you, solar panels? We could go with RTGs as well, but... Yeah, well, I guess we'll throw on RTGs while we're at it. 
Always open solar panels, and how about two RTGs for good measure? Uh, not underneath the thrust. Okay. So, that is a quickly assembled probe. And let me just double check that I've got the Delta V for a good old fashioned transfer to Joule. Calculators out. 3,400, all right. So there we go. That is our Joule probe for this little part of it. And now I'm going to get the base for the Taurus. The Taurus doesn't have a controller on it yet. So I'm going to put a controller and some power. And then the rest of it, oh, okay. And the rest of it is under subassemblies. So this is for my sandbox series. I'm testing out the Taurus, but we also want to know where we need to air brake at. Okay, well, this is going to need a bigger uh, fairing, obviously. Uh, more, more fairing more well we can taper it like this uh, no 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 like that and yeah okay wonder if that'll stay stable okay so if you guys haven't seen the Taurus launcher before this is it I've had to put the parachutes on the outside because I'm pretty sure if I try to put it on the inside here it'll rip the thing apart uh, with the new atmosphere uh, otherwise, it's the same as it was in point two five. So uh, I didn't have the benefit of all of the gizmos that we do now. But this is actually legal part clipping. In other words, I didn't have to turn on part clipping in order to do it. And it is supposed to be a reusable stage in theory, though that's an open question now with the new version. So that is among the things we're going to test. Otherwise, once it separates, I think the staging will be fine. Okay, so this is dual probe on the Taurus B. Okay, everybody following along here so far? Alright, we're going to have to time warp to dual transfer. My, I think the first thing to do will be to try it out at 120 kilometers, which is sort of the traditional arrow breaking point at Joule, I think, unless uh, people have different numbers. I don't know. So there's the sandbox test thing, where I test out the stuff for, for the actual sandbox EDB series. That's why there's a GB refueler sitting out there. In the real sandbox EDB series, a Jeb is actually floating around in the GBN. And I just uploaded a sandbox EDB episode, episode 3, where I I further things along a little bit with a, with a truck that mines or extracts ore from the moon. So if you haven't checked that out, that would be a good video to check out. Oh, also other things. I made that video very quick and it has a lot of stuff in. Okay, SAS is on, throttle is up, and I'm going out at a fairly low bitrate compared to what my upload speed ought to be. So this is the Taurus launcher. It's a, it's a sophisticated thing. It's got the, the KR-2L. Now, originally when I built this, the KR-2L was a heck of a lot more useful than it is now and I'll shut it off oh I should have that action grouped did I have that action grouped uh, hold on let me um, let me throttle down ignite the engines and see oh no I can't do that okay let me just throttle up and we'll try it in flight okay here we go fortunately the mainsails still have all the thrust they could ever want so no problem getting this off the ground. You notice it's not a perfectly symmetrical. Okay. Uh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I think our payload needs strutting. Let me see if I can control it though, just for just for kicks. Um. Okay. So that's that's not that. Okay. That's the center engine. Okay. 
Uh, I'm gonna take SAS off. I'm not too sure it's helping out here. Okay, right. Interesting, solar panels can't be deployed while stowed. That's a good pointer. Okay, looks like with SAS off, things are a little bit smoother. That's until my horrible piloting skills kick in. But we just want to stay with prograde, really. And that'll be fine. Okay, by now I can turn off the center engine. It's not efficient to have the center engine on uh, with this version because the center engine is really inefficient until altitude, high altitude. Yeah, I was about to say the Taurus B, of course, is asymmetric. It, uh, it's 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 got it's wider along this side than this side, so it's so sort of interesting. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Um, we are turning a little bit quicker than I wanted. Oh boy. Hi, Cisha. Uh, what's up is this thing is turning quicker, and I can't use SAS because it starts to wobble. And this is sandbox, this is sandbox mode. Uh, okay, it's not wobbling too much right now. I'm gonna light the center engine now. Cause, oh, I've got a partial thrust. Uh, okay, something was in the way of my throttle. I'm gonna be testing dual re-entry. Uh, if I don't test uh, curb and re-entry first. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, SAS off. SAS off. Stop, 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 stop. Our payload is very unwieldy and it is not reacting very well with this rocket. We are way too shallow. I don't think I'm going to be able to test whether the Taurus is going to be able to come back down like this. Well, if I can get up into orbit in the first place. Hi, Dark Chaos. Okay, no, 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 no. Uh, okay, this is no good. Uh, no word on Unity 5, and no, it's not already done. I mean, I, I have Unity. I, I've toyed around with it occasionally. I can't imagine all the curious issues that might occur on trying to change to Unity 5. It's bound to be difficult. Okay, I, I don't think this launch is going to be getting into orbit, so I'm going to uh, just revert. And I'm going to take it back to vehicle assembly and put some struts on. Okay, more struts. More struts. Trouble, trouble is, we it's not very easy to put struts on this thing. Because uh, we can't put them on this base. The base doesn't take struts. Um, best place is probably... Probably here, I guess. But then the the heat shield is in the way. Okay, well, at least that part is sort of strutted up. Um, but I need the SAS units, otherwise this thing isn't going to work very well. But there's just no easy way to do this. We could go with the cubic octagonal trick. I guess. I don't know if you guys guys have seen this before. I forget who I saw this from first. So that, that's the cubic octagonal trick. What do you guys think? Is this enough strutting? I don't know. I was hoping that the fairings would protect it a little bit better from wobble, but they definitely don't. It's a bit asymmetric too. I mean, it's a bit, a bit off here. Obviously asymmetric, but a bit off. All right, but let's try it again. Here we go. Well, first sign of instability from SAS and I'll turn it off. 
I'm gonna go up to 700 and then start turning. The payload should be well within the capacity of this launcher. Okay, it feels like the strut work is successful. Yeah, a lot smoother this time. So struts, struts remain your friend. Yeah, the launcher is supposed to be reusable. And again, this sandbox for those just joining. The launcher is supposed to come back down and land. It's got parachute, lots and lots of parachutes. The parachutes you see in the staging there, those are on the launcher. The probe is not supposed to come back. So it looks like this. And, oh darn, I forgot to turn off the center engine. It's not very efficient without turning that off. Okay, uh, looking good. I'll drop fairings at 40 kilometers here. We've got a lot of oscillation, probably because we're now accelerating pretty quickly. Okay, so fairing. Okay, well there goes the fairings. And now I'm gonna switch engines actually. So I'm just going with the center engine because now the center engine is efficient. It's got 340. Uh, the the main sails, I forget what they have, but it's less. I think it's like 320 or 315. Yeah, you remember the launcher from the series. Yeah, uh, it, it was supposed to lift the refueler, right? This launcher had the station refueler. And, uh, well, now I don't have the buggy uh, 3.75 meter decoupler on it. So uh, it's just using the fairing base to attach the payloads and using this 2.5 meter decoupler to actually deploy the payload. I don't know if we're going to have enough fuel for orbit though. All of the engines on it have lower ISP, right? So uh, on, on the other hand, the atmosphere is easier to get around. Okay, I better cut this now. Yeah, so... It's easier to get through the atmosphere, less delta V, but the ASPs are all lower, so I don't know exactly if this has enough fuel to get to orbit safely anymore. That's part of what I'm testing here. I expect so, but probably with only if I turn off that center engine earlier and just rely on the main sails for the beginning part. But there's not enough thrust, you see. Other engines are tilted, uh, which... Uh, you mean here? Yeah. <laughs> or if you're talking about on the probe, yeah, too. Uh, the the other end, the tilt, they're tilted here as well to pass by the fairing, and uh, not the fairing, the heat shield. Yeah, but this this launcher was built in 0.25, so we didn't have all the gizmos that we have now to correct. Uh, well, to correct anything. Okay, I've got. Well, that's a lot of fuel we have left over in this stage, actually. Maybe I will get into a better orbit before bringing the stage back down. Well, if, it, if it's not afternoon for you, you can just imagine that uh, the person is wishing you a good afternoon for your next applicable afternoon. How about that? Maybe that's a solution. Okay, that's a better orbit. Alright, we'll leave our payload like that. Just going to decouple it here just for sanity's sake. Okay, and we'll no longer be. Okay, well, that's tilting a little bit. Activate the poodle. Alright, probe is away. Probe is away, and let's get its solar panels out. So now, bringing this back down. That is part of what we're testing here, and we've got enough fuel, clearly, now. Let's see, um, yep, this should be interesting. Standard protocol is to burn on this side here, and I don't need to add a maneuver, though. And we'll try 30 kilometers, because it's a good ballpark number. 
let's just try not to knock our mission. So as I turn to retrograde, I'm going to pay attention to where my mission is and that we are not either burning it up or headed straight towards it. Sorry it's dark, uh, still stock. No I mean light adjustment either. Okay, here we go. Looks clear to me. Okay, 30 kilometers. That is good enough for me. Alright, time warping. So, lots of questions. Whether the parachutes on the outside here are gonna explode, whether anything is gonna be able to be maintained stably. This is the back end of it, so mainsails. It's a uh, asymmetric thing, wobbly, lots of stuff going on because again, 0.25 did not have the gizmos to build this. Uh, oh boy. Anyway, struts, fuel tanks, a lot. So we're really gonna be testing whether reentry heat is a serious thing here. Temperature overlay, temperature gauges. Why don't we? Uh, sure, why not? Aerodynamic forces overlay. Um, actually, maybe we should uh, also see the numbers. Uh, thermal, thermal data in action menus. Just have that an option as an option. So what are we at right now? Yeah, anybody know what the this temperature in particular, what the units are supposed to be? Because 354.6 at this altitude, I don't know. Yeah, I, I remember you guys told me that the temperature gauge causes memory leaks. Uh, watch out for that. I always have my my RAM up, so I know I'm using 2.1 gig RAM. That's in Kelvin. It's pretty hot for Kelvin. Um, that's 70, more than 70 degrees Celsius. Eighty degrees Celsius, actually. Looks like Kelvin, but is it? <laughs> is it Kelvin? That's what I'm wondering. Because eighty degrees Celsius here is pretty, pretty dicey. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Th I don't know what this. Two thousand. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't know what X. If that's exterior temperature, then that's way off. There's no way it's a thousand eight hundred and twelve. Well, well. I, yeah, I don't think it's possible. Um, I think we're gonna overshoot. Uh, brakes, brakes. Let's get the brakes out. Yeah, uh, let's let's actually manually slow down. Uh, it's complicated, Rodon, because there there are highly energetic particles in space. Uh, you know, the sun still sends out a lot of mass, so space is not completely empty, and. But, but they're very, they're not very dense. There's not much of them. So it's weird. Uh, you can get very high numbers for temperature in space because of what the sun is putting out. But, uh, yeah. But once you hit the atmosphere, like in the upper atmosphere, it should be much more reliable. It shouldn't be uh, numbers like that. So you could get weird numbers in space, but uh, you're not going to get weird numbers in the up. It's actually going down now. That sorta of makes sense but well we'll see once we pass the, uh, once we get to the surface uh, we should know what temperatures we expect there right uh, at least that that we know and so if it is Kelvin once we get to the surface we should be recognizing the kind of numbers uh, surface temperature is around 300 Kelvin right uh, less than 300 Ke Kelvin usually uh, we see the drag lines from our brakes but what is our trajectory? Our trajectory is still way off. I'm gonna pull it down even more using thrust. Oh. Temperature continues to... Should have stuck a thermometer on to compare. Good point. Good point. Actually, maybe we'll do that with our little uh, dual research probe. To see what the temperature in vacuum or near vacuum is. Okay, I, like I said, below 30 kilometers, I don't uh, like the idea of keeping the air brakes out. We're going to overshoot the KSC. I don't have enough fuel to stop that. This mod that does the calculations in Celsius? Well, it doesn't matter to me. I can I convert uh, Kelvin to Celsius in my head. 273.15 uh, uh, Kelvin is 0 degrees Celsius. 
So, turn the thing uh, sideways for. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, good cap of there, right. I'm less worried about the re-entry heat, honestly, than I am about the parachutes ripping the thing apart. Can I land on water without spamming the recover button? Not with this one. I don't think so. Not unless something's changed. No, this, this has to land on land, I believe. We'll see. If it makes it that far. Actually, the center engine seems to be the hottest right now. We've got a little bit of lift towards one side. Can you see the little blue lines there? I don't know if that's very clear or not. There are blue lines here, creating lift to one side. And that's why we're a little bit off from prograde here. I wonder why that is. I will wait until safe velocities for parachute deployment, which means less than the speed of sound which probably won't give them much time to deploy, frankly. And the external temperature getting to uh, what we would expect at the surface if it was measured in Kelvin. Uh, actually, it's a pretty cold day in, uh, in around the KSC. It's now zero Celsius. Okay, uh, first parachute deployment. Cross your fingers. Okay, here we go. Okay, parachutes are deployed, and it's not slow enough really. Just hoping for a little bit more drag than this. Well, let's see what we can do with throttle as we get closer. But uh, right now, oh, well, uh, temperature exterior is three uh, thirteen. Very very hot day now. Oh shoot. Uh oh. Oh no, I didn't want to do that. Okay. Wow, this is an effect. We have splash down. And it's tipping, it's tipping. I don't have to spam the recover vessel thing, but it was definitely got to tip over there. Okay, so uh, we recovered it, but it was definitely tipping over. Possibly, possibly if we put uh, Werner engines on the top there and let them fire, it would have maintained stability. But anyway, the main thing is that we're going to be taking a dual probe out to dual and seeing about reentry, even though I've spent a long time trying to bring that stage back down. But uh, we need that stage, that Taurus B is one of my finer moments in design. Okay, so let's see our orientation is like that. Let's target Jewel. Can you add parachutes to make it land on its side? Well then I'd have to add some counterweight on the other side, right? Because the parachutes have a substantial amount of mass, especially when you're talking about that many. So then you've got dead weight uh, and you've got double it. So having it land on its side is uh, is possible, but not very efficient. It's a lot of weight when you think about it. Uh, we're talking about uh, the parachutes are like 0.1 or 0.15 a piece, and if you've got like 30 or 32 of them, that's 3.2 or 4.8 tons. <laughs> 